Let me tell you a story real quick. So just today I was sitting in the mosque and I looked in front of me and I saw this man who was sitting there. And it's pretty, it's pretty sad thing to see. He's an old man and he's quite obese and he's mouth breathing. <sighs> he's just sad there mouth breathing. But it's not just that, he sat there mouth breathing, scrolling on his phone. And for anyone who knows symptoms of bad mental health, they can tell this man is quite depressed. So as I was just looking at this dude, I had a lot of intrusive thoughts of just, damn bro, like this guy's, this guy's really depressed, this guy's like anxious, he has bad mental health. And I remember the time that I had bad mental health and the time that I used to scroll for seven hours a day, just casually <laughs> scrolling on my Instagram. And that brought to me, that brought my heart almost to tears as I just looked at this old man and he's, he's obese. He's just sad there. And when, uh, when, when the shake came in and he started to give the, the, his speech, this man started sleeping. I swear to God, he sat there and he's just... <sighs> it's, it's so hilarious and yet it's so sad. Because you're seeing this man and this man is a father of children. Well, what would, what would his children think of him? If his children understood his state, it's so just sad. You see, when we talked about this mindless man... We didn't exactly talk about someone who would be pleasant to talk to. Probably because he'd just be lost and mindless. He wouldn't even hear what you're telling him. And yet, one of the issues are is... Most of our interactions with people around us are mindless. Either that by our side or by their side. And obviously, it's quite hard to find mindful people. All really just because of the food that they're eating. They can't even focus because they've ate junk food a week ago. Or the bullshit they're consuming on the internet. Or all sorts of different toxic friends that are just fucking their mental health over. Or what they consume at night as they're in their bed. Jacking off like pieces of shit. And so really... I mean, when, when you think about it, really, all the world is faced against you with all these food industries, and these porn companies, and these fucking social media companies that are just trying to fucking manipulate you. And they bring literal psychologists to know what color activates your brain the most. And it is just ridiculous. Unfortunately... Not many people will try this because it's not this mythical, magical solution. It's not this, oh, just drink this potion and you'll, you'll become mindful again. You'll stop having mental health problems. And unfortunately, me and you are quite ambitious. We're not like the average person. And so what we strive for is just getting the success, getting the finances, getting a beautiful feminine woman but guess what if we stay on this trajectory if you stay on your bad mental health what will happen is as follows so how, how about how about you imagine your feminine woman like actually close your eyes and just just imagine your future wife your feminine woman and here she is she's beautiful and you you kiss and cuddle and you're happy together and then imagine she's away she's away at a finish line and now imagine when you're so slow and you can't even run and there's this huge masculine man and he's just running faster than you and he's prince 
And now she's gone with that man. They're married. You can open your eyes. Now, do you want that to happen? Another masculine man who decided to fix his mental health takes your future wife. Step zero, why? Why fix my mental health? Why go all in in just trying to fix this thing that I can't even see? That doesn't have a physical metric to it. Well, you see, most, most of your problems, most of your addictions, most of your scrolling and your porn addiction, your fapping addiction, your video game addiction, most of those things come from your mental health. A lot of people think that these are individual problems, that when you have a video game addiction, it's because you're addicted to the video game as a cause on its own. Not as in, like, this is a cause of a bigger problem. This is a symptom of a bigger problem. Some symptoms of bad mental health include having addictions to most of the addiction, like addictive substances, or addictive items, or addictive behaviors. They also include being mindless, which basically means you're not aware, you're not in this moment, you're not physically there. Even though you're physically there, you're mentally not there. And that's mindlessness. The complete opposite of mindfulness, which we're going to talk about that stuff later on. And for anyone who's still trying to cope with anything, I just kind of want to sneak in my story. You can skip this part if you're just on to just learn the, the lessons here. But I kind of want to talk about what happened to me when I basically ignored my mental health and said, Hey, like, fuck this shit. I just don't want to, I don't want to do this step. It all started back then in the 1st of June last year and I wanted to improve myself. I was watching all these self-improvement videos and I was just on because, you know, like the message was just all on and masculine men are like basically screaming at my face for being pathetic. But then what I didn't really realize was the importance of mental health. I watched a video on mental health and... That video like skewered onto me the idea of, hey, you should be meditating every single day, which we're going to talk about. But essentially it gave me the way to fix your mental health. And yet I didn't listen to that. I just went over it mindlessly. And then I never did the steps there. I did do a dopamine detox, which we're going to talk about it. But I didn't really do the habits. And what ended up happening to me was basically... I had half fixed mental health. My mental health was better than most people around me. But I still had bad mental health. I still had the symptoms of like the addictious activities. And it was all really just fixed when I realized, okay, this is getting way too out of it. I'm relapsing every single day on like these addictions that I'm having. And then I basically took myself in, in my room held myself to just do the habits every single day. And for anyone who's basically like, who's been a usual viewer of this channel, they would know that I basically cut off four weeks to just fully focus on my mental health. And now I come at you with this mental health guide to just help you with this problem because I solved it myself. But I couldn't do the, my work. I, I, I skipped it specifically to do my work. And I didn't do my work and I ended up being mindless in my work, which led to me having to go back, throw my work in the trash till I basically can say, hey, my mental health is fixed. And here I am. And so I don't want you to fall on this mistake and regret that you haven't did this like six months later. One thing I really want to kind of nail in is your attention span. See, this, this video won't ever help you if you're just sat there like a mindless pig. I'm not saying this to offend you, but if you're just sat there playing with your nose and you're not even like focusing on, you're literally going through the comments, you're looking at the suggested videos. If you're doing that shit, this video won't ever help you. If you want this to truly help you, make it full screen and actually focus in because this isn't like a bullshit random fucking entertainment video. This isn't some Mr. Beast video. They can just sit there with your popcorn, play with your nose, and eat that fucking shit. 
And so if you want this to truly help you, just make it full screen. Step one, dopamine detox. Now, we're getting into the solutions. The first one and a key one, it's all about removing the things that activate this molecule in your brain. You see, we've got to explain just a quick term. It's instant gratification. Instant gratification means the thing that will get you the gratification, which is the, the happiness signal, it will get you the gratification right now. But then in the long run, it'll basically fuck you up and make you into a little pathetic piece of shit. That's instant gratification. And you see, dopamine detoxing is basically removing every single activity that has to do with giving you the gratification today so that it'll fuck you in the long run. And examples of this are like doing drugs, like playing video games, like scrolling on your social media, like consuming mindless content. You could also say, you know, going, like watching porn, fapping, uh, you get the point. And what these activities end up doing to you is you'll get the gratification right now. You'll you'll be super happy, you'll be super energized, and then as soon as it's done, oh, where the fuck am I? Why am I so fucking sad? Well, of course you're going to be sad. That's instant gratification. And what we want to do instead is we want to do the delayed gratification, which is going through hell right now so that you can have the gratification later on, so that you can enjoy and have the happiness in the long run. And it's not going to be just a quick spike of happiness. It's going to be fulfillment, happiness that lasts. So how do we do that? Well... It's all about really getting rid of the things that are fucking you up. First thing I'd ever do on a dopamine detox is erase every single social media. And I have a full guide on this. But basically, if you're not really like, you don't understand why you would do something like that, I would suggest you just go to that video. But for anyone who just wants to take action, just delete all your socials, every single social media app. And I, I used to cope a lot. I'll, I'll tell you a story. I used to cope a lot. And I basically, for... I've, I've removed all my socials, right? But I had one social. Just I, I basically coped with it as... It was Snapchat, by the way. And basically what I did was just... Oh, yeah, I, I just... I use the filters because I look better in the filters. And, and, and But, but it's, I, I, don't, I don't scroll on this. I don't. And what ended up happening was basically I fucked my mental health because of it. And I couldn't even realize it because I just was using the app. And I was scrolling on it like a piece of shit. And... The triggers and the half-naked women on the fucking explore page. It just fucks you up. And so, for a long time, I've kept it on my phone just as a coping mechanism. And then when I realized, okay, why the fuck is this on my phone? I basically removed it. And for good reason. And ever since I removed it, I've fixed my mental health twice as fast. And gotten rid of most of the addictions as well. Another thing I'd say is getting rid of the video games. Like, when you're sat there for seven hours just playing video games, now that's fucking your mental health up. And again, if you're coping and you don't fucking understand why I'd say something like that, just go to that fucking full guide already. And then obviously come back. <laughs> but re removing the video games, well, video games, you can research this if you're like interested but basically video games have this known reputation of making humans suicidal and i'm not even joking you can literally search this up they literally make you suicidal they they make you want to kill yourself for anyone who just wants to be on an average dopamine detox i'd suggest you basically just cut out junk food cut out sugar fucking fructose and again if you're coping, 
The full guide is in the description. You could just go and see the full guide and you'll understand why I'm saying all that crap. One last thing for this section of dopamine detoxing is the basic stuff that are very personal to you. So something like some people watch series and movies, others watch football matches, others watch anime. These types of just, they're kind of like stories that basically get you distracted around different platforms and different shit. And to complete a dopamine detox, one must basically eliminate these things. For a long time, I used to watch anime, and I used to cope with this stuff. Like, I used to have a lot of books. I, I have them right behind me, actually, like in one of those shelves. I used to cope with anime, and I used to just be like, no, I, I shouldn't get rid of anime. I shouldn't get rid of anime. Anime is not dopaminergic. It's not, it doesn't have to do anything with my dopamine detox. But basically, I then realized it was fucking me over, and my dopamine shit, and then I just basically removed it, never since I, my life's been, like, at a point where basically I've just been improving substantially. And each one of those sacrifices that you're making today will amplify your growth. And again, if you're coping, then go with that full guide. I suggest you watch that full guide, just because you probably won't understand just, like, what to do from this. I'd highly suggest you just go there. You'll probably be more convinced in what you're doing as well. So I highly recommend you actually go and like watch that full guide, it's in the description. Step two, the four essential habits. So we have four habits that fix your mental health, four habits that help you live a better living. And for these habits, you have to build them and you have to do them every single day because these are the types of habits that they will basically determine your mental state for the next two weeks. And the two weeks prior to that are what determine the, the week that you are in. But basically, doing these habits will substantially improve your mental health. It'll, it'll give you this push to your mental health where you're feeling so much more aware, so much more present. You're feeling... You're just feeling like you can be happy again. You can be fulfilled again. And that's what mental health feels like. One point I forgot to mention in the start of this video was that isn't just about how like you have m many addictions. That's like the symptoms of bad mental health. Symptoms of bad mental health also include aggression. It also includes suicide. It also includes being a really bad person towards others, abusing others. It includes all these things. All these bad behaviors you can think of. Bad mental health includes those. And then good mental health includes altruism. It includes doing the good stuff. It includes all, all the symptoms of good mental health are just doing the good stuff and avoiding the bad ones. The first habit that you need to get into and the habit that will get you initiated on your self-improvement journey is reading. Whether that be you read on Kindle, you read a physical book, or you read PDFs on your phone. It doesn't matter. All you really have to do is just get into the habit of reading. Another thing you can do, but I wouldn't really suggest, is something like educational podcasts. I could give you some trusted sources, but I would highly recommend that you instead just read books, just because books happen to be a better source. And usually, like, the writer of a book won't give you bullshit knowledge. He'll actually give you something that's valuable, or at least most authors. But for educational podcasts, unless you have the right podcast, you won't, like, actually... You'll probably get trolled a lot with the information that you receive. So... For now, I'd, I'd say stick to stick to just reading, and then maybe in future videos, I'll relay you to other sources of like educational podcasts that actually matter. The amount of reading doesn't really matter. You just read to the extent that you can read. If you read one page or two pages, awesome. If you read ten pages, awesome. Just 
read as much as you can read because the capacity to read for many people i mean it's obviously trainable but many people just ever since they graduated from school they they didn't touch a book so at least to my knowledge most people don't even know how to read so if you can read two pages i'm proud of you bro <laughs> the next habit is journaling as simple as it gets just get a sheet of paper get a pen and just question some of your beliefs it's as simple as that you could go as deep as trying to find your purpose or as simply as just learning about yourself journaling is you emptying out your thoughts on a piece of paper whether that be use narrative type of journaling which i don't really like personally some people really like it and you could also like go for classic just self-discovery journaling which i do most of the time and it just happens to be the better option so you can try both but i'd highly recommend that you don't skip one over the other try try self self discovery journaling just because i think it's it's a better option but if you happen to enjoy narrative journaling also go for that and all these habits that i'm talking about i'll basically have like a self improvement habits video where i'll cover them more in depth the third habit and one that's very fucking important is meditating you see most people don't have the ability to focus and this practice is what basically grows your mindfulness it's what grows your ability to focus and david data says in the way of the spirit man i'm probably going to butcher this but i think i'm going to get my point across he says a man's greatest strength is in his ability to in his presence and his ability to focus his mindfulness something like that and basically what this really means is your ability your your strength comes from your ability to focus from your ability to be present with a person in front of you or present in the thing that you're doing see right now as i'm sitting here i'm as present as a rock i'm i'm sitting here i'm i don't have a single thought in my head i'm just here sat i'm just recording this video i'm passing on this knowledge onto you and i don't have any thoughts in my head because i'm present and all this is achieved by mindfulness. Remember that time when you were sat with your mother and you were trying to really talk to her, but she's on her phone and she's scrolling. And you're really trying to just like, mom, I'm, I'm, you're trying to talk, but it's, it's just not working. She's not focusing with you. That's mindlessness. That's the inability to focus because they're focused on something else. Many of the things that we do fuck up this ability to focus like multitasking doing any two things together fucks you up but obviously this is like for the more like advanced self-improvement guys who would want to like basically just stop multitasking as a whole but for you it's as simple as doing the biggest task that will give you the most returns and that's doing this meditation you see mindfulness meditation starts with you sitting down and close your eyes. You sit in a place that's very like very quiet, just because you want to be focusing on your breath. And then you just sit there and you focus completely on your breath. You don't have a single thought in your head, but just your breath. You just are tracking your breath. You're really focusing on your breath. So you're just basically like this and you're just sat there and that's like And eventually, as you keep doing this, you you will catch yourself having been distracted. So you were focusing on your breath and then you'll realize, oh wait, I was thinking about, you know, like the, the thing that I'll eat after I'm done with this meditation or whatever you might be thinking about. And the simple thing that you need to do, and this is a thing that most people struggle with, you just need to bring your focus back to your breath super fucking simple it's, it's not this super mystical thing literally just sit there focus on your breath you lose track of your breath just refocus that's it that's mindfulness meditation and you do not believe the benefits of this like this is honestly if there is one habit between these 
that'll basically get you the most to your mental health is this one, bro. <laughs> Not gonna fucking lie here. This, this, this habit. I mean, I skipped it for a long time. I even, I told you that I was basically not doing my habits. I specifically wasn't doing this habit. And that's the main reason why my mental health wasn't fixed. And so, that's all the more reason for you to start doing meditation. And last one is um, exercise. Now, listen up. The reason I add exercise in here is not for any, like, just... The way you look and anything like the <laughs> we get that the way you look might fuck up your mental health but the reason i add exercise in here is because it gives you a sense of progress it's basically like for any of you who has a video game addiction try getting into the gym and try actually like gamifying the experience how, how would you do that just basically like every week challenge yourself with the next weight like you you're playing with a 5 kg kilograms uh, kilograms of like be like dumbbells and you're just like doing bench press with those try the 10 kilograms next week and actually like physically try to just really train the muscle what you realize is that wait i think i'm out of the fucking frame bro what you realize is that basically the more you go to the gym the less you want to play the video games and they'll eventually like you basically stop and you just leave the video games now the dopamine detox will basically get you to try and like get rid of those symptoms of the bigger problem. But that's only because if you keep fapping and your mental health is good, well, yeah, it's because you're doing it delib like deliberately. But as soon as you just basically say, okay, I don't want to fap and I want to fix my mental health. You're fixing your mental health, your mental health is fixed. And then now you can actually leave the habit because you're not doing like doing it deliberately. And obviously, like, I mean, I don't really, like, I didn't want to say this, but you're, you're definitely going to relapse. You've been doing these habits for years, so you're definitely going to relapse. Like, it's not going to be easy to just, like, leave these habits that you've been doing for years. You've been watching porn for at least 10 years. I certainly have. And so it's very hard for you to just leave it at once. Like, just say, I will never watch porn again, and then you just don't watch porn again. That, that That's very hard. You'll definitely relapse. But that shouldn't be a motivator for you to relapse. Like, my mentor who taught me all this stuff, he told me this. And I remember I was just sat there and I really wanted to just like grab the PlayStation controller and just start playing video games. But then I was like, like the, th like the thought that I was coping with was basically, yeah, but but he, he did tell me I'm going to relapse. I've been doing this for 10 years, of course. It's like, I'm definitely going to relapse. And then I just realized, oh, wait, what the fuck am I doing? I'm coping with what my mentor told me. And I threw the fucking controller and I just didn't fucking open that shit. And I think you need to realize this is that not because I tell you you're definitely going to relapse. You make that the motivator to relapse. So <laughs> definitely like get into that. But going back to exercise, I think the reason I get you into exercising is because a lot of the habits are basically just gamified dopamine. And if you want to get more gamified dopamine, you just exercise. How I think of it is when I used to exercise, I didn't used to push myself enough. I frequently would just start slacking off, have one more set and I just skip it. I won't really push myself i count i used to count reps i know i like i know this is gonna sound weird because you do count reps you do count sets but trust me bro uh, bro I, should, uh, I i might just relay you to the aesthetic body roadmap this is a video that i'm i'm gonna be making very soon but in that video i talk a whole lot more about that stuff and uh yeah i mean you definitely need to watch that video it's like the exercise for guy because i won't mention exercising in the self movement habits but i i go in depth into just exercising and building like the aesthetic body roadmap or it might like i might call it like dream body roadmap something like that bro like i'll i'll, I'll put it in the description um uh, but yeah definitely like check that out because it'll it'll give you more insight on this but the general thing is try to push yourself more that's like that's the point i want to get across basically from exercising is if you already do exercise just add something in there whether you add like one set to every exercise you do you add like 10 reps to every like set you do doesn't matter just make sure that you add something to what you're already doing or if you're exercising step three gratitude so for this part of the guide it's all about just 
gratitude. So let's just explain this term really quick. What is gratitude? Gratitude is being thankful for what you have, being grateful for what you have. That's gratitude. And you see, gratitude is this, it's, it's what leads people to just have thankfulness for everything around them. Like when I'm sat here and I'm, we're going to get you to do like some kind of gratitude meditation. But basically, when I'm sat here, I'm grateful for this room, bro. Like I have this wholesome aura of just, I'm so grateful for everything around me, bro. I'm so grateful for this water bottle. I'm so grateful for this like scripts notebook. I'm so grateful for my desk. I'm so grateful for my room. I'm so grateful for everything in this room. I'm so grateful for this sword that I have on my wall. I'm so grateful for my bed. I'm so grateful for everything. And it's really just getting you to have this aura of constant gratitude. And to build this skill, we have a couple of things. So, I mean, I thought about telling you about gratitude meditation, but I think I have a better alternative for that. So first thing I'd probably tell you about is gratitude journaling, which is the alternative for gratitude meditation. Gratitude meditation is like meditation is just sitting down here and just saying, I'm grateful for this, I'm grateful for that, I'm grateful for this. But the problem is, you don't have somewhere to track things, so you'll keep repeating yourself every single day. Instead, what I think is a better kind of thing to do is just a gratitude journal, writing down things and not repeating the thing again. So I'm grateful for my parents and I don't write that again. I think you get the point. And you write down and basically what this leads you to do is you have so much less things to be grateful for because you've already written down everything that you're grateful for. But you're basically trying to find little things that you're super grateful for. So I could say in my gratitude journal, I'm so grateful for my karate journey. It taught me a lot of things. I'm so grateful for my water bottle. It's it's made from metal, so it's not estrogenic, which means I get to keep my testosterone. I'm so grateful for my perfume because it's it smells really good and it makes me uh, looks look handsome or something. You get the point, right? Just find the things you're grateful for and write them down in this journal. You could like basically write. My water bottle because it's made out of metal and I get to keep my testosterone. Like this extra sentence on there. I think that adds to the value of like you just running down basic things. And the other meditation that we're going to get you to do is something like death meditation. So many people won't be able to handle this type of meditation just because it's, it's very deep meditation. It's basically imagining the death of someone you love or yourself so you could imagine your death or you could imagine the death of your closest friend and what this ends up doing to you is it makes you more grateful for that person because you've imagined them literally dying and then you open your eyes and realize oh wait they're not dead I'm, they're still alive and so the next time you see that person how do you think you'll interact with that person? Maybe it would be this jack asshole just, just literally like sat there trying to fucking criticize the shit out of them. Or will you just be a wholesome person because you'll literally imagine them dying? Many people won't have the guts to do this, but... It's... It's something that's gonna help your gratitude a lot, especially for the people around you. Or the gratitude for you and the gratitude for you being alive. I'll definitely, I'll place you a video in the description of a death meditation, kind of just guided death meditation, where this guy is talking about you visualizing the death of someone. And he's specifically talking about like your mother. And he's basically like going really into the depths of it, really trying to just twist the knife onto you. So I'll keep that in the description and basically just rely on it the first couple of times you do this meditation. You could then just start doing it yourself after you get this scheme of like how you're specifically going to do it, like the script of just death meditation. Or like you could also just ask ChatGPT, just generate you a script of death meditation or something. But you get the point. Step four, socializing. So socializing actually helps your mental health a lot. But I've got to warn you from something. It's not just socializing with anyone. It's specifically socializing with people who 
are like-minded, so people that are like you, and people who actually like you, not just like these Jeffrey pathetic piece of shit friends of yours, these friends that keep criticizing the living hell out of you, that your mental health gets worse when you sit around. Or this gamer friend of yours that if you don't, like, give him the, the golden gun, he'll just start crying his eyes out and start criticizing you. And so, the first thing that I'd ever fucking tell you is, try and avoid those people as much as possible. Because, and I know this is very hard for you to fucking do, but, but you've got to leave those guys. I know it's fucking painful. I know it's not going to feel comfortable. But ever since I left my toxic friends, it's it's basically been a whole lot more growth for me. I've I got a whole lot more better friends now. And all I really had to do was just endure loneliness for six months to get people who are literally multi-millionaires who sit right beside me, who talk to me. And so, I don't know if I want to stay friends with this Jeffrey Gamer guy. Because he, he, he makes me feel comfortable. He's the same age as me. He, he's in the same school and in the same class as me. So, so I, I just want to hang around with him. Oh, he has good grades. He, he gives me the, the, the assignment papers. Oh, he, he gives me the homework. I don't have to do the homework. Trust me, the more you cope with this, the worse the situation gets. What I, what I would do is just leave the toxic friends and actually just move on. You're going to have to endure a lone wolf arc, but then as soon as that's done, you're basically, you're going to come across a friend or two or three, or who knows, you might come across a whole lot more than that. But those people will actually be true friends. They will be brothers. And so... In the time being, for these six months where you just try and cut off these guys, the thing that you need to do is just socialize with people that actually re like resonate with you. So for you, because you don't have much people around you, what I would say is probably just your siblings or your parents. They might not really resonate with your message. I would just sit around with them and try and... Find the common things between you and them. Don't really obsess over the things that you and them aren't really like. Don't agree on. Like, especially as you're going on self-improvement, they'll really start to disagree with you. And that's very normal. Because they're in, like, the entirety of their lives, they've been basically told this message. And they, they can't change it until they basically see someone, oh, wait, this guy's getting success because... He does this and that and this and he, he has this thing that's better than us. Until they realize that thing, they won't ever trust you. They'll always disagree with you. They'll always argue with you. And that's fine. What you need to do is just try and find the common things between you and this person in front of you. And try and just... Try and really amplify how much things that you have. So it could be just as simple as... You and this person like exercising. So you and this person just like exercising. That's it. You amplify that. You make that the whole lifestyle of your friendship. You know? And what that ends up doing is basically... It kind of... So you, you remember the arguments I talked about previously. The arguments will basically disappear. Because... Now you're basically trying to really zone in the conversation. So really like close in the possibilities of a conversation. You don't go super far. You won't have these deep conversations. But in the very least, it will help your mental health. And until you find those friends that really like resonate with you and those friends that are actually like-minded like you and who want the success, you're basically just going to have to endure this lifestyle just trying to get that. I wish I have a more butterfly and rainbows answer, but I don't. It's, it's just going to have to be a lonely period where you just endure until you finally find your tribe. And 
I wish I wish it could help more, really. Step five, sunlight. So remember how our ancestors used to just spend most of their day on their feet outside? That actually was one of the main reasons why they weren't depressed, why they weren't anxious, why they didn't they didn't have the addictions we have, they didn't have the bad mental health we have. You see, sunlight as a whole not only just fixes your health and your sleep and that stuff, it, it fixes your mental health. Sunlight, just going outside and getting sunlight in your eyes, that alone fixes your mental health. Just doing that every single day. It's insane. And yet most people can't get consistent with it. What I'd say is just do it two times. Do it in the morning, morning sunlight exposure, where you go outside as soon as you wake up. Now, if the sun isn't up, then just wait till the sun gets up and you like flip on as many lights as you can till the sun gets up and then you just like go outside. And you just basically go outside and you don't look at the sun directly, but just stay outside and look at the brightest spot there is. Now, you can look next to the sun, but don't look at the sun directly, just because you'll like hurt your eyes doing that. And then the next time that you'll do that is in the sunset. Going out to look at the sunset and do that every single day, that fixes your mental health because it fixes these circadian rhythms in your your brain it's it's this weird system in your, in your brain where it's it's linked to sleep but it's also linked to mental health and just looking at the sunset it makes brilliant sense like there's a reason that our ancestors didn't have bad mental health beside the screens and the fucking dopaminergic shit that we have today it's because they used to be outside more they used to look at the sun more they used to see the sunset so no wonder right and so I, I would definitely incorporate these two things. Morning sunlight exposure and sunset sunlight exposure. Just do these every single day. And you'll realize that first you'll start waking up earlier. You'll start sleeping more like earlier as well. But that only gets you to a good circadian rhythm. It'll reveal to you your natural way of sleeping. It's really like this sleep mental health link is kind of really deep. You can like research this stuff because I don't have to like the, the science stuff here, but you get the point. Morning sunlight exposure, sunset sunlight exposure every single day for the rest of your life. Now, let's say you're done with all this stuff. You've fixed your mental health. It's been two weeks. You feel awesome. You, you don't have these addictions anymore. At least they've really like dropped to a significant degree. What I would do from there is, and I would make sure that my mental health is actually fixed, not just the numbers that you on your fucking mental health test. Actually, like, are you consistent with your habits? These are the questions that I would ask. Are you consistent with your habits? Are you doing all these habits that we've said previously? Are you doing all of these every single day? How do you feel? Are you being, like, do you have anger towards other people around you? Do you feel depressed? Do you feel empty? Are you actually doing something with your life? And if all these are basically yeses, then we can move on from there. You can basically go to your next step. And your next step is the Monk Monk Full Guide. I'll place it in the description, but basically this is the video for you to find direction. And one thing I kind of want to warn you on just before we wrap up is in that video, I talk about going to the Purpose Full Guide. Now, the old Purpose Full Guide was basically a goal setting full guide. It wasn't really a purpose full guide. You can definitely watch that video. And if you have watched that video, then like certainly use it to goal set, but don't use it for purpose because back then I was really wrong about purpose. And I basically thought purpose was a goal, just any goal you could think of, just align your life to a goal. And just, that's how I thought it was. And now I've realized, because one of my mentors taught me this, that purpose is much more deeper than this. So what I would tell you is 
watch you, you you can watch that if you want to like learn about goal setting but i would definitely recommend that you watch my new purposeful guide the purposeful guide that's coming soon where i specifically talk about like how to find your purpose and also like it's it's not currently up but it's, it is going to come very soon but that that full guide will really help you a lot and obviously, I it, you need purpose in order to actually like go on monk mode. So, in any case, you have to watch the purposeful guide, not the old one, but the new one. But I think you get that already. So, I know I didn't really state this at the start of the video, but the duration that it takes to fix your mental health usually varies because. Not like not everyone is very consistent or as consistent as the, as the other people. Like, one person might be as consistent as time doing these habits every single day and really going on with it. And all really, all it will take is just two weeks for that guy, as opposed to another guy who's not very consistent who does meditation one day and then 10 days he doesn't do it. Well, then that guy will get his growth in six months. Till he eventually becomes consistent at those habits. You can't override this. There is no mystical, magical thing for you to just be like, okay, I'll, I'll just drink this potion and all of a sudden I'll, I'll fix my mental. There, there is nothing like this. There is no shortcut for this. But that's what makes it such this. It's super easy to fix. All it takes is just two weeks of consistency. And yet most people have fucked up mental health. Most people have anger issues most people are depressed most people most people are anxious and so now you know how to fix your mental health and what's left of this is just to get consistent for the next two weeks and for the rest of your life because if you don't then your mental health will get fucked again and so these are just the the full protocol of fixing your mental health and anytime you feel that your mental health's been fucked, you can go back to your notes if you've been taking notes throughout this video. Or you can co come back to this same video and specifically relearn these things. But I wouldn't go as far as trying to forget these things and having to go through this extra step. Just stay consistent in what you're doing every single day for the rest of your life. Just do these things that I've told you and hopefully you shall be fine. In any case, I'll see you in the next full guide, bro.